probably wasn't going to happen. Um, it probably, from the initial discussions, which happened in 2005, mm -hmm. to when we started working on it in 2012, it was a lengthy process. Books take a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we thought there wouldn't be enough for a book. Okay. And first it got brought up, somebody's like, oh, we should do a documentary. And I'm like, oh, there's not, all the video footage is terrible, and there'll just be a bunch of talking heads. And then we compromised and said, well, we could probably like just do a book and like... Like a yearbook, like 20 copies for our friends. Okay. And then we've discovered... Um, uh, Joe Juan and Daga, and he had some incredible photos <coughs> that nobody's ever seen, mm -hmm. and he was just like, "Yeah, use these." And then we we're like, "We have a book." <laughs> yeah. We just we just interviewed people backstage, or you know, in a diner, or whatever, while bands were touring, whenever we had a chance. So it's not like it was our full time jobs, you know. It was mm -hmm. something. A pa you know passion project that we did on the side right. over a period of years, not really knowing if we were going to put it out ourselves, or we're going to do a Kickstarter, or we're going to talk to a publisher. We just kind of did it on blind faith, hoping that it would come together someday, and maybe someone would want to put it out. One of the things I noticed was, as I sort of pulled back from the material, I was realizing it documented a period of enormous change. It was also a time when you know, personalities and songwriters emerged from, from the underground. A change that you can still feel today. Talking in front of people, particularly in a space like this, puts people under a microscope. Sorry. I thought that was badass. I want to thank you guys so much. Thank you. And thank you, Program, for being a DIY space. And thank you, Skullcrack and Shinerstorm, who are coming up.